Hi everybody and welcome to Paul Hinckley's wonderful world of occupational health with me, Paul Hinckley. There I am, yeah. Uh, okay, today all we're going to do is briefly look at uh, giving you some coaching on how to get through your spirometry or your lung function test. You'll be familiar with the uh, mouthpiece. Um, different occupational health nurses use different equipment, um, but one thing that's in common is that there will be a sort of mouthpiece that looks a little bit like this that will be attached to some form of spirometer. Could be a laptop, could be some smaller electronic type device. Now I'm just going to uh, prop this up here, hopefully, while uh, I show you what the important things are. Now, first of all, it's really important that when the uh, operative is putting your data into the machine that the information is accurate okay so don't fall over like that in surprise this always happens to me there we are um, make sure that the information you provide is accurate and ensure that that information is correctly put into the uh, machine okay the really important factors that you need to consider to get a fair result are height, okay? Don't just guess your height. By all means, do not overestimate your height, yeah? Because it'll give you a false result. Ask for your height to be recorded there and then, and it should be put into the machine in, in, um, in, in, in centimeters. So if you're six foot two, for example, it's 188 centimeters. If you're six foot, it's 183, et cetera, et cetera. You get the idea, I know you do, you clever people. Next, um, ethnicity. Um, it's a question that some nurses find quite difficult to ask, uh, particularly when there's no obvious uh, signs of ethnicity in terms of skin colour, but it's really, really important because different, different ethnic groups will give different lung function results, okay? So if you're uh, mixed or of uh, black African Caribbean descent, uh, Asian, please make sure that that is recorded and input into the machine accurately, okay? Because it will contribute to your uh, final results. Next thing is uh, the equipment itself. As I said before, you'll come across something uh, a bit like this. There's an exhaust port here, and this is the part that you blow into. It's a disposable um, cardboard mouthpiece. Sometimes you'll have a, 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 an extra filter on there as well, but this is the basic setup. Now, when you actually do the blow, and I'll go through the techniques of the blow in a second, be really careful that you don't block the exhaust port there with your fingers because it will give a fake result and it will slow, slow the, the, uh, the, the force of uh, air down and you'll underachieve on the test. So the best thing to do is make sure that you have a good grip on it like this so that you're not blocking anything through this hole here. Okay, next I'm just going to take the mouthpiece off because it's important to demonstrate that you do get a good seal around it. Um, and I'll pick up the camera again to show you. Uh, here's the business end of the mouthpiece. It's a one-way valve so it'll blow out but you can't come back the other way, okay? When you put this into your mouth make sure that you get a good seal all the way around. So it sits just inside the lips and you clamp down around the end of the mouthpiece with your lips so that you're not losing any air around the side. Okay, so it's going to look a little bit like this. It goes in, rest it on your teeth. Mm -hmm. And it's just like that. Good seal all the way around. Like that. Not like that. Like that. Okay. So, put that back there and... Let's talk a little bit about the actual technique. Now, the test is in two parts. The first part is simply to measure the volume uh, of your uh, lungs, your lung capacity, okay, in, uh, in litres. We are, um, our, our, our lung volume is determined purely uh, by the size of our chest, the size of the lungs themselves, the size of our heart, which sits here and takes up a good percentage proportion of the left lung. Uh, so we're kind of stuck with it. It, it. It's fixed. It's about the size of us physically in terms of our rib cage, and it's going to be a fixed, a fixed volume. It's going to be somewhere around four or five liters for for a, for a man there or thereabouts. Okay, and it's really important, as I said before, and I'm going to reiterate it here, that you make sure that you record your uh, height and your ethnicity correctly, because if you've got a smaller set of lungs, 
uh, it doesn't necessarily mean you've got a lower lung function uh, or vice versa, uh, but you do need to make sure that all the data is correct to give, you, so give yourself the best chance of uh, an optimum uh, result. Okay, so the first part is all about measuring the lung function and there's no real effort at all involved in this, even in the blowout. The most important thing that you can do is uh, give yourself a head start and this is why technique is so important in these tests. Give yourself an advantage and by doing that you will be able to blow out more air than you would normally. Okay, So when I'm talking about a breath in, I'm not just talking about a normal breath in during uh, normal, normal routine daily living, you know, which is just like that. It's a big, big, big breath in. So I want you to take as much air in to your lungs as you possibly can. Almost to the point that it's uncomfortable and you want to get rid of it and then I want you to take a bit more on, okay? So first thing to do is take your time. Don't rush, don't be rushed into this test by anybody. Sit and regulate your breathing, okay? Have the uh, handheld mouthpiece thing ready. Make sure that that's in nice and firm. You're not blocking the out there. So you have that ready. Uh, you can sit down, you can stand up. I prefer people to sit down, but if you're a little bit maybe overweight, for example, um, and you feel that uh, there's pressure on your diaphragm, you might feel more comfortable standing up. There may even be a protocol that the, the operative, uh, the occupational health operative has to follow and you have to do it a certain way. That's fine, but just make sure that you get these little techniques correct and you'll sell through. Okay, so regulate your breathing, take your time. <clears throat> okay, the, the camera's gonna fall over again in a minute. So I'd still take my time, I'm not gonna be rushed. So I'm gonna regulate my breathing now. So I'm gonna shut up for a, few, for a few seconds. You'll be pleased to hear, here we go. Okay, what you'll see there is I took my time, I regulated my breathing, I got as much air into my lungs as I could, I held my breath, I brought up the mouthpiece, I made a really good seal around the disposable mouthpiece, and I gave a nice, smooth, smooth blow, steady blow, nothing, nothing difficult about that, okay? That's gonna measure the volume, the capacity of my lungs. Usually you only need to do that part once, the second part is the force flight or capacity, and this is the more challenging part, although it's not really that difficult because you're gonna be giving yourself that advantage, that head start again that we talked about. So it's exactly the same build up, okay? Regulate your breathing. But this time, when you're ready to blow, same good seal around the mouthpiece, yeah? But I want you to blast it out really, really quickly. I want you to get the vast majority of the air that's in your lungs out and through this handheld mouthpiece within half a second. All right, and that is going to involve you blasting it out and then pushing and following through to get rid of every last little bit of air that's in those lungs, okay? Now, that's a very unnatural thing to want to do. You're never going to want to empty all the air out of your lungs. Why would you, okay? And it's not like normally blowing into something where there's some resistance, like blowing up a balloon. There's no resistance. You just need to push, okay? It's going to make you want to cough, yeah? Uh, and if it does, good. It means you're doing it right, all right? So, again, giving yourself that head start this time. Hold your breath, bring up the mouthpiece, don't block the outlet, good seal, blast it out, yeah? I want you to imagine, for those of you that are old enough to remember reading the Beano and the Dandy, a pea shooter, blowing a pea out of it, trying to hit something, or a blowpipe, poison dart, firing it out of a blowpipe, aiming it at somebody that you don't like. Give it as much umph as you possibly can, okay? So again, here's a demo for you. Mouthpiece ready. Regulate my breathing. <coughs> okay, wow. I coughed a bit there. As you can see, it sent me a lovely purple collar. Actually, it's my T-shirt. But I think you got the gist. I'm going to try it again because it's important that I'll do it from this side. It's probably my best side. No, I don't know. 
Um, we'll try it one more time so that you get the idea of the blast that's required. You can do it from the side, okay? So regulate the breathing. Okay, <clears throat> that was a slightly better technique on my part there. You can see that uh, I was pushing through, pushing through, following through as much as I possibly could and getting rid of all that air. That would be one good blow, okay? And ideally three blows are required to check for consistency. Um, you shouldn't have any problem doing this if you just stay calm, take your time and follow these techniques, yeah? Good luck with everything. I'm sure you'll be fine. Again, remember the golden rules. Input, have, make sure that the correct data is input. So in terms of your height, ethnicity, smoking history, anything else that, that is, is relevant that the uh, nurse or, or, or practitioner requires, make sure that is put in accurately. Calm yourself down, take your time, make sure that you get a good seal around the mouthpiece with your lips. Make sure that you hold the hand held mouthpiece correctly that you don't block the exhaust outlet and that you regulate your breathing okay good luck with everything you'll be fine and i'll see you next time with something equally as fascinating from paul hinkley's wonderful world of occupational health with me paul hinkley bye